Gate Show presented by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery. And for the next two hours, we're going to preview number four, Alabama, and number one, Michigan. Three o'clock, Rose Bowl, Pasadena, part of the college football playoff. And we got a show for you today. That includes our friend Tom Abraham from 97.7 ESPN, The Zone, and Huntsville. That includes Andrew Bone to talk recruiting from Bama Online and On3 Sports. That includes Mike Johnson from the 2009 National Championship team. Chris Stewart, the voice of Alabama football. He'll be on radio for the call in Pasadena. And uh, that includes some of my other buddies as well. I'm going to introduce them to you here in a second. But first, let me remind you guys that the show is – uh, is presented by Yingling Lager. That's a sixth-generation company. Our friend Cheryl Yingling, who's part of the company's ownership, is a proud Alabama grad, and there's a little bit of crimson love in each one of those green bottles. So it is great to uh, talk. Number one, Michigan. And when you talk about Michigan, they are 13 and oh, and number four, Alabama got into the college football playoff. They are 12 and one. And it is great to have our friend Chris Coleman from the Colmerica podcast and uh, part of Unique there on the strip. And uh, our friend Brett Elmore from uh, WJLX in Walker County. What's up, guys? Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Finally, game day. Feeling it, Mick. I'm telling you right now, guys, let's get into this right off the bat with the show. How does Alabama can just continue the success that they've had? Well, uh, it's, it's a process. It has been since day one. Uh, it hasn't changed. Uh, the Jimmys and Joes are better than the X's and O's, but it helps when you have both. Yeah, I think uh, Jalen Milrow is going to be the key. He's got to be the man for Alabama. Um, don't think Michigan has seen a schedule like we've played. Uh, you know, that, that's a couple of keys to victory there. And, uh, of course, the number one seed has only won uh, the college football playoff three times. Alabama, one of those teams. Let's uh, know, go ahead and knock off that number one seed and keep rolling on. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I think a lot of this comes down to Alabama continuing to play the kind of football that got them to where they are right now. And, uh, you know, that's just going out there and taking care of business. Alabama is also dealing with Michigan and the sign stealing. Uh, Coleman, what did you think about that? And do you do you feel like Alabama not using iPads was a good idea? Well, Alabama hired – a, a Michigan assistant that was there just last year. And a week after he gets hired is when they decide we're not going to use the individual iPads. So to me, that's a, that's a red flag. From, we don't know what all the NCAA has found out in their investigation yet. And but that shows me that that might be part of it. And you remember one of their other assistants who was terminated immediately that's uh that probably had a, something to do with it. Yeah, you know, they found something on his computer or whatever. Look, Saban's playing chess, not checkers. You know, he and he's not gonna take any chances. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but back during the 2020 COVID season, the game he had to sit out, he was allowed to meet with the team virtually before the game. And so at the hotel capstone where the team stays, you know, before and everything. Uh, the UA had to go in and hard wire. They had to run actual internet wires. You know, they, they wouldn't use Wi-Fi because he didn't want to take a chance of the Wi-Fi going out, you know, while he was meeting with the team. So they had to go in and run the cable the night before so he could meet with them. He's not going to take chances. He He's on top of every little issue. That's why he's Nick Saban. Yeah, no doubt about it. Same question for you, Brett. Uh, I, I agree totally with Coleman, but, uh, you know, Michigan came out a uh, story over the weekend, said, hey, we've been doing this since November. We've been uh, not using our iPad since November. We're doing the same thing. I don't believe that. Uh, I do believe that uh, uh, possibly Alabama was tipped off to something. Um, and, you know, this is uh, being investigated by the NCAA. There's some stories that came out over the weekend. And actually, the FBI is going to get involved in all this. Uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to find out what comes of this. Ultimately, uh, you know, I don't care if Harbaugh 
fired someone or or someone got cut loose or whatever. Ultimately, it's his program, and it ultimately falls on him. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, guys, I want to remind you that the Bama Football Tailgate Show is brought to you by Pearl River Resort in Choctaw, Mississippi. Now's a great time to make your picks count at the Time Out Sports Lounge and Sports Book. We're going to talk about Jim Harbaugh and uh, Nick Saban, Alabama, and Michigan. But first, let me remind you guys, use the promo code Bama Tailgate at newlifeart.com, 15% off any regularly priced item over there right now or items at new life art don't go anywhere more of the original bama football tailgate show coming up flight by yingling it's the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. Alabama's ultimate sports destination and a place for outdoor enthusiasts to thrive. It's a community rooted in history and one that's on the cusp of a burgeoning art scene too. Tuscaloosa is vibrant, it's charming, and it's familiar. Its people welcome you with open arms and warm hellos into a community that's tied together. Tuscaloosa is our home. Hey guys, it's Chad Anderson. You already know how stellar and amazing our work on YouTube is. Now imagine how much I can help you with a mortgage, real estate financing, short-term rental knowledge, or setting up your investments properly and saving you thousands on taxes. My teams have helped over 10,000 families in my career. Would love for you to visit chadanderson.info to set up a private conversation with me. And yes, it'll be me who calls you. That's chadanderson.info. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 372289. Hey y'all, it's Jennifer from the Floribama and it's time for Floribama Fun Facts. The Floribama first opened in 1964 and we're celebrating our 59th year of doing it on the line. We host over 150 events every year, including mullet toss, Oktoberfest, Halloween costume party, Frank Brown songwriters, Thanksgiving and Christmas potluck, the biggest New Year's Eve party, and of course, the polar bear plunge on January 1st. All the events, including our live music schedule, are available online at floribama.com. Immerse yourself in the continuing dynasty of Alabama football with The Legacy Continues, a visually striking image from artist Daniel A. Moore. This sequel to Moore's 1992 sold-out painting, The Crimson Legacy, features iconic moments and memorabilia from the last 30 seasons of Tide football. Don't miss your opportunity to own this lasting tribute sure to be cherished by Bama fans for years to come. Pre-order The Legacy Continues now at DanielMoreArt.com. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, has been making beer in America for six generations. And for nearly 200 years, we've been all about bringing the good times. By hand. By foot. By bike. By bikers. By fanny pack or jet pack. By whatever means necessary. With Yingling traditional lager, good times taste even better. Yingling, bring the goods. R&R Cigars invites you to the Cigar Mansion in downtown Tuscaloosa. The best cigar selection and bourbon in the southeast awaits you. 2703 6th Street, downtown Tuscaloosa, near Home 2 Suites, or Northport, next to Winn-Dixie. TheCigarMansion.com. See yourself in Sevierville, Tennessee. Your Smokies start here. This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort. Back on the original Bama football tailgate show. (laughs) 
Back on the original Bama football tailgate show, previewing Alabama and Michigan from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, the Crimson Tide and uh, Michigan with an opportunity to win this football game to go to the college football playoff and play for the national championship coming up next in Houston, but we're not there yet. Talking with a couple of our buddies, I'm Mick Gillespie, and uh, it's always great to have uh, Chris Coleman on with us, Brett Elmore, talking about this matchup. And, guys, let's just jump right into this again. Um, first off, I want to know what you think about Jalen Milrow versus the Michigan defense, and I'm going to start this time with you, Brett. Jalen Milrow versus the Michigan defense. Well, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Milrow has got to be the man for Alabama. Um, but, um, you know, he has improved so much uh, after being benched against uh, South Florida. And um, it's, you know, really not out of the realm to think that he he may be the best player on the field uh, during the Rose Bowl. And, you know, Michigan has it uh, faced a quarterback. Uh, who's this much of a threat, uh, running the ball, throwing the ball, um, you know, um, and he could be, this could be the starting point for a big Heisman Trophy run uh, last uh, next year, you know. Um, he wins this one, he's going to be a legend, and um, I, I think it really starts on the offensive line, too. I think uh, uh, they're much bigger and stronger than the um, – uh, Michigan defensive line, and that's a, a threat that Michigan has already talked about, is uh, the size of the offensive line against their D line. So, if that offensive line, which was another question mark at the beginning of the season, if they play well, and Jalen uh, plays his game, Alabama is going to be just fine. Well, Coleman, you know, kind of the same thing with you, and and Michigan uh, has one of the deepest defensive lines in football. Alabama's Jalen Milrow, um, you know, obviously is elusive, can throw the football, made some mistakes early in the season, got better as the year has gone on. But Michigan's just so deep on that defensive line. How do you feel about that matchup? Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with everything he just said. Uh, I'm not worried about their depth because their starters aren't as good as, as our starters. They're, they're backups. I guess even though they rotate in, you call them backups. Uh, they're not big enough. They're not strong. Michigan likes to play physical football. And against the teams they played so far this year, they can't. Uh, they're not going to bully Alabama. You're not going to push Alabama around. And they're not going to – if you dominate the line of scrimmage, as long as we don't turn the ball over, we win this game. And I, I don't think it's close. Um, I think Alabama handles this game well. Uh, I agree that Jalen Milrow is the key because, well, the quarterback is a lot of times, but he definitely is. Uh, don't turn the ball over, no ill advised interceptions, and uh, and we're good to go. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of the, the way I look at this matchup. I think Michigan can beat Alabama. I think that the path for them to do it is way narrower than what Alabama's path to beat Michigan is. Bama turns the ball over. They don't play good football. Um, and if they don't stop Michigan's run, it could be a, a, a really tough day uh, in Pasadena. But for Alabama, they've done a good job of stopping the run except the Iron Bowl. And, um, you know, and I wonder if that's going to, you know, kind of crop back up again. And, and I'll start with you this time, Coleman. Do you think Alabama can stop Michigan's running attack? Because what we saw in the Iron Bowl would tell me that maybe they can't. Well, one, when you bring up the Iron Bowl, that's that's a different animal than every other game on your schedule. This is Alabama Auburn. If you don't know it and understand it, you're not going to understand it. But records go out the window. What you've done against other teams goes out. What you've done all year goes out. Especially down in that booty trap curse stadium they have down in uh on the plains. So I don't really take a lot from that game because you're going to get their 100 best effort. Now, I'm not saying you won't get that from Michigan here uh, here today either, but I'm not nearly as worried about it. Uh, I, I feel like the big factor is that our secondary, we come up. This is the biggest change I've seen in our defense this year from last year is our secondary will come up and hit and tackle. And so it takes away 
those little screens and those little things you do to kind of slow down some of the D line and some of the front seven because you're not going to bust a big gain on on those. And uh, I think that taking that away, making them one dimensional, you're not going to beat us. Brett, he says uh, Coleman says you got to take them away and make them one dimensional. Uh, I, I think Michigan's very one-dimensional. I mean, they hardly even threw the football against uh, uh, against Penn State and uh, and still won the game. But I guess it's booby trapped down on the plains. I don't disagree with Coleman at all. No, I don't either. Yeah, uh, yeah making them one-dimensional, you know, may work. Of course, now Coach Saban said on Saturday during media day, I heard an interview with him, and uh, he brought up a, a point that. Um, uh, about the tight ends and the way that Michigan uses their tight ends. And it uh, poses a different threat than what they've seen this year. Uh, they do a lot of different things with their tight ends. Uh, and uh, they, they like to use their tight ends in years past, but they didn't have a receiver, uh, uh, kind of like a stud receiver like they do this year. Now, uh, so that'll be concerning a little bit. But the run game, you know, it, it, it's really hard for me to think that Michigan – uh, has the front uh, that can uh, push around Alabama. Um, now, I, I will say Michigan, they, they've kind of been known for their offensive line. I mean, uh, for the past two seasons, uh, um, they have had the best offensive line really in the country, uh, Joe Moore Award winners. Um, so, uh, it, it still is a good squad, but, you know, they lost probably their best offensive lineman, Zach Zinter, um, in the Ohio State game. Right. And, and then – Great point. You, 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 you put them against uh, uh, all SEC linemen like uh, uh, Dallas Turner and Landon Jackson. Uh, that may be a recipe for, six, uh, you know, a disaster for Michigan. Um I think, uh, yeah, if Alabama stops the run, and I think they can, uh, it's going to be a long day for Michigan. No doubt about it. Great to have you guys with us on the original Bama football tailgate show presented by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery, and Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi, home of the Timeout Sports Lounge and Sports Book, which uh, the three of us need to get together and go over there and uh, put some money down on some games and, and hang out. They've got the, the table games and they've got the slots and they've got the sports book. They've got Dancing Rabbit Golf Course and all of that. Uh, as well. All right, Coleman, what, what Alabama defense is going to show up today? I've got a feeling that you're, you're going to tell me that it's the defense that we saw against Georgia. Uh, similar. I do want to jump back uh, real quick to your point about the tight ends. You're absolutely right. And in fact, the last time Michigan did beat Alabama, the 2000 uh, Orange Bowl, I was at that game. Tom Brady loved this tight end all day um, long. That, that was just a precursor of what we saw the next 20 years in the NFL. Um, and you're absolutely right. Uh, good news, one, Tom Brady's not there. Two, I'm not going to be at the game. So we're, we're good. <laughs> we're good on both, on both counts. Um, I do think that the defense that you'll see is going to be very aggressive. I think that uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to come up and come after them. And – if, if they want to try and do three yards in a cloud of dust, I think they're in for a long day. Uh, they're going to have to get creative, and I don't think they're creative enough. They don't have the talent to be as creative as they want, as they need to be. Do you worry about the, the trick plays, Coleman? Not for Michigan. Uh, I've been uh, – with, with Washington or Texas, sure. With, with Michigan, not so much. Uh, do, do you think it's because is, they, they because they run them so much that you you, you know they expect them? I mean, I guess they're just right. they're, they're part uh, of their Harbaugh, offense. Harbaugh is extremely arrogant, and that comes across in his coaching style. And I think that uh, I think it makes him more predictable, and you kind of see it coming a lot of times. How about you, Brett? Do you think Harbaugh's, uh, as Chris says, is arrogant? <laughs> do I think? Do I think he's arrogant? Yeah, 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 I think he's yeah, just a little bit, uh, <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, but uh, I don't know. Is this a? Is this going to be a story of, um, you know, uh, t taking a look at the coaches? I mean, 
a lot of folks are saying Harbaugh is going to vote for the NFL. Uh, a lot of folks uh, are saying this may be uh, Saban's last hurrah. Who knows? Do you think, uh, uh, Mick, I'll pose this question to you. Which is more likely, Harbaugh to the NFL or Saban retiring? Man, I think that's a great question. And uh, I don't know, man. You know, I I loved when Kevin Steele was asked about it uh, <laughs> yeah. during the press conference. And, you know, and uh, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, he'll tell us when it's time for him to retire. I, I don't get the vibe from recruiting, um, from the fact that he's won this team over. This generation is a really hard generation of kids to teach. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a fair statement. Um, they're entitled uh, as, a, as a generation, um, and you really have to kind of work around challenges that coaches didn't have in the past, and Saban's done a great job of that. And I'm just talking about like all the kids in this generation and not, you know, I know there's exceptions to the rule, but it's a lot different than when we were coming up uh, to how it is right now. And I think that if he felt like he wasn't able to kind of work past that and it's been honestly, it's been amazing to see how that hasn't crept into the Alabama locker room this year. This team has been the opposite of entitled. They've gone out and worked their asses off and it's gotten to gotten them to where they are right now. And I feel like if Saban, you know, I still think he's got – he looks young. I still think he's got a lot of juice in, left in the tank. And I think that he's going to be around for at least another season or two. And who knows, maybe longer. I, I think Miss Terry's going to be the one that tells him when it's time to retire. And I think he's going to do like he always does and, and listen carefully. And that's how we'll, – we'll, well, that'll be when it's over for him. Harbaugh, to me, I think this is his last game at Michigan. I really do. I think he's going to lose to Alabama, and I think that it's going to be time for him to go to the NFL. He's been flirting with it for a while. He's in trouble. Um, he's gotten himself into all of these issues with the NCAA, and uh, you know, and, and I just I, and, and you, when there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, we hear the guy's constantly going to be in the NFL, Coleman. Uh, yeah, I agree. And honestly, I, I agree with you. I think this is his last game. I think uh, as you get into the spring and more of the NCAA and FBI stuff starts to come, he's gone. He's going to bolt. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm scared to death as a Bears fan that he ends up in Chicago. <laughs> I hope it's in L.A. Uh, I hope he take the Rams job, man. They're better. They're better to go there. Uh, but scared to death that'll happen. And as far as the the uh, little Nick Saban step away, there's only really two people in the world that can tell you, and it's Coach Saban and Miss Terry. And that's it. And if it doesn't come from them, you know, whatever. But we dealt with this years ago about would he, would he leave and go to Texas? Would he go right. here? You know, when's he going to leave? And I've learned over time that uh, Coach Saban's going to do what Coach Saban's going to do. So, yeah, look. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I was going to say, too, I'll answer my own question quickly. I think that it would be Harbaugh going to the NFL uh, rather than. Uh, Coach Saban retiring. Saban's still relevant. He did his best coaching job this year. Uh, he's in the playoffs. He's looking for another national championship. He's not out of it yet. He's not irrelevant. He's not playing in a lower bowl game, sort of like the Music City Bowl or something like that. He's playing in the Rose Bowl. And um, uh, it, it would be Harbaugh bolting. Yeah, great point. All right, guys, as we move towards the end of this segment, uh, thoughts on the college football playoff. Save your picks for the end of the show, all right? You're just your thoughts on this Alabama-Michigan game and then the Texas against Washington game. Coleman, I'll start with you. Okay. Um, well, I'll start with this. Uh, I, I've been really annoyed hearing people go, the committee got it right or the committee got it wrong. Because while I agree Alabama deserves to be in the playoff, I don't think the committee got it right. Uh, if your job is to get the four best teams, I don't think they did. I think that not Florida State, Georgia is the team that got left out, that there would be a favorite against Washington, there would be a favorite against Texas. Be a, you know, they, they were number one all year, two times the national champs. I think that uh, what they didn't want to see was Alabama and Georgia play for the title again. So 
I guess the committee got what they wanted by leaving them out. Uh, these two games are going to be great. Uh, Washington, they did them no favors by sending them to New Orleans to play Texas. That's going to be a home game for Texas. It's going to be burn arms all over the place. Uh, Washington travels okay. I remember their one playoff appearance in Atlanta against us. They had a decent crowd, but it went to what Texas breaks. And so the Superdome, definitely going to be a home game there. Alabama, Michigan needs no hype. These are two of the traditional blue bloods, you know, going at it. Uh, but Jim Harbaugh, yet to win a playoff game. Nick Saban, seven national titles. Let's not to pretend to compare those two. Uh, Harbaugh will go to the NFL with zero playoff wins on his resume. Brett? So that's not me making my predictions. <laughs> hey, there you go. We'll hold off for the rest of the show. Brett, quickly, tell me your thoughts on the, the college football playoff before we get to break. I uh, agree a lot with uh, Coleman on um, I don't think they got the top four right. Uh, I think Georgia deserved to be in there. Um, I think uh, the Texas-Washington game is going to be, I believe it's going to be a better game than uh, a tighter game than Alabama-Michigan, if that makes any sense. But uh, I, I think it's going to be real close. Uh, but I like I like these final four teams. I'm not uh, complaining about it. Uh, you know, when it's all said and done anyway, Florida State's going to claim a national championship, so who cares? There you go. Well, that's we're going to get into this more when we come back. I want to remind you guys that the show is always presented by uh, our friends at Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery. And don't forget to Roll Tide Pods on YouTube. Jake Coker, Ryan Anderson and me, we get together for the Elephant in the Room podcast. So check that out on YouTube. And uh, for all of you guys that are listening right now on our statewide radio network, Roll Tide. When we come back, we're going to talk to Andrew Bone. We've got Tom Abraham, though, right after the break to help us break this game down. Alabama and Michigan, the Rose Bowl, previewing it right here on the original Bama Football Tailgate Show. Flight by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. Hi, Barry Buckner for Tuscaloosa Hyundai. Based on the past two years, you've heard nothing but bad news with interest rates. But when you can buy new Hyundai Santa Fe's with 0% financing for five years, that's great news. And it's here right now. New Santa Fe's now at Tuscaloosa Hyundai with 0% 60-month financing. Zero for 60 months. Plus, you make no payments until February of 2024. If you've been thinking about buying, don't wait. New Tuscaloosa Hyundai Santa Fe is with zero 60-month financing plus no payments until February 2024 is great news. So let's get straight to the point. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. Tuscaloosa Hyundai, corner of Skyland and Hargrove, TuscaloosaHyundai.com. Get America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and owner assurance during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Shop online, TuscaloosaHyundai.com. With approved credit, see dealer for complete details. Hey, this is Reagan, owner of r r Cigars, the Cigar Mansion in downtown Tuscaloosa. Located at 2703 6th Street, across from the home two suites. Come down to r and see why we're the ultimate cigar and bourbon experience. With over 165 bourbons and five private barrels, our selection of bourbon is unmatched. We have the best cocktails around and our cigar selection is legendary. Our lounge and service are world class. Come and experience the luxury of the mansion and see why it's a world renowned cigar and spirits destination. Check out Pawn Royale at 1019 McFarland Boulevard in Northport. The summer season is almost over. Time to go to Pawn Royale and find some amazing deals. Right now, our lawn and gardening inventory must go. That includes mowers, trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, you name it. Pawn Royale has deals on everything. Many items at cost or less. If you're in the market, come make a deal. That's Pawn Royale, 1019 McFarland Boulevard in Northport. 
Barry Buckner for Genesis of Tuscaloosa. You heard it said, affordable luxury. But when it comes to affordable service, every new Genesis we sell comes with three-year, 36,000-mile complimentary service. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. Genesis of Tuscaloosa. Ownership limitations may apply. See your retailer for details. Genesis reserves the right to change program without notice. Exclusions may apply. Unique on the Strip. It's the best place to watch sports. You're not even kidding. 11 TVs, NFL and MLB package, NHL, EPL, and so much more. If you want a game, they have it. Now they're doing weekly NFL Pick'em, winners every Sunday, and grand prizes on Super Bowl Sunday. And we haven't even mentioned the drink specials. Of course they have daily drink specials. You can see them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Unique T-Town every day. Unique on the Strip. The best place to watch sports in Tuscaloosa. This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort. Welcome back to the original Bama Football Tailgate Show, brought to you by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery, as we preview Number one, Michigan against number four, Alabama. And it's always great to talk to our buddy Tom Abraham from 97.7 ESPN, The Zone in North Alabama. And, of course, you know him as uh, the voice of Bassmaster Radio and also a killer collection of mini bass boats. And, Tom, I'm going to have to ask you about that at some point. But let's get to this football game right now. Alabama is trying to become the first team to ever beat the number one team in the country back-to-back games in the same season. It just seems like such a monumental task as they take on a great Michigan team. Yeah, I mean, that is an interesting note. That's one that I did not not know and not think of because I'm not a big rankings guy, you know, as as far as, you know, who's number one, who's number four, and so on. I mean, you look at these two teams and, you know, the line, it's almost uh, even. I think it's one, one and a half. It's kind of hovered around there. So I don't know, one's number one and, and one's number four, and yet they're pretty much considered dead even. Um, having said that, that would be a that would be a big deal, and uh, it will mean absolutely nothing once they tow meets leather here in a couple of hours. Alabama is such an interesting team this year when you look at their whole body of work. Michigan has been consistently good. They were dominant at the beginning of the season. And honestly, they played their toughest games of the season – and we're still able to take care of business without even having to throw the football. But let's start with Alabama. Jalen Milrow has developed into a, a dangerous threat at quarterback. What do you think Michigan could do to be able to contain him? Turn him over. I mean, that, that that's probably the only thing they can do. I mean, they, they're, they're second in the country in turnover margin. And so I think that's the key for Michigan uh, to, to try and – Confuse Jalen Milrow a little bit uh, defensively with their with the different uh, coverage schemes and try and turn him over in some way, shape, or form. Um, the thing is, is that I don't know how much pressure they'll get on him because they're going to spy him a lot. I mean, there's no doubt they're going to ask him to beat them from the pocket, and and you know he's been able to do that down the stretch here with some teams. So there'll be a spy, maybe even two, on him, keep him contained in the pocket, and make him throw the ball and make him go to a secondary read. He struggles a little bit when it's a secondary read and uh, as opposed to the, to the, to the first read, I think that's the biggest uh, key for Michigan today. Hmm. Uh, Do you think Alabama is going to play with more pace just because Michigan's strength is three lines of defensive linemen that could pressure the quarterback that, that really haven't played a lot. They, uh, as a group, they, they cycle in a lot, and, and they don't do a lot of um, the, the no-huddle stuff in the Big Ten. Could you see Alabama coming out playing, trying to play pace today? I could see that early, and I could see that sporadically. I think that's the key is, is that if you do it sporadically, 
then the defense is like, uh, are they going to go far? Are they going NASCAR here? A lot of teams call it NASCAR. Are they going NASCAR here? Are they going, you know, uh, are they going to huddle? Uh, if we start making a change, are they going to immediately break the huddle and get to the line of scrimmage? You want to place that doubt in the mind uh, of the defense. But, you know, I, I don't think that it's going to be about a lot of X's and O's. I don't think it's going to be about the trickeration. I don't think you're going to fool anybody. You might get a play here or there. This is big boy football. I mean, this is going to be strap it up. Um, two teams that have great agility, great size, uh, and are well-disciplined going at it with each other. And this is, it sounds so negative to say that whoever makes the fewest mistakes. But if Alabama is clean in this game, if they don't turn the ball over and they have less than three or four penalties, five penalties, they're not jumping off sides, you know, and doing stupid pre-snap uh, violations and things like that. If they play a clean football game, Michigan's in trouble. I don't know how Michigan can beat them that way. If they turn the ball over, give Michigan some extra, um, you know, extra uh, possessions. Uh, if Alabama makes some dumb penalties, if they give penalty, you know, first down by penalty, which is like a turnover. If they do have those things, then Michigan's going to win the football game. You can't do that against uh, this good Michigan team. But if they're clean, Michigan's going to have to do something special to get by them. I feel the same way. Like the path for Alabama to win is way wider than the path that Michigan would have. Although I think Michigan can win. I mean, look, they're the favorite in this football game, although none of us really feel like they should be. Uh, I feel like Vegas is a little bit behind Alabama, kind of comparing them to where they were the last couple of years and not where this team is today. But, you know, that'll play out when this game kicks off. Do you think Michigan's going to use some trick plays in this game? They may. It would be, a, to me, a little bit of a sign of desperation. On the biggest note, though, keep in mind, Michigan's a very public team. I mean, we think of Alabama as a public team, though, there's no doubt. And you always have to pay a little extra, you know, with Alabama mm-hmm. when they're the favorite and so on. Michigan, though, is a very public team with a relatively myopic fan base. Because you talk to Michigan folks, you'd think that they've won, like, eight national championships. <laughs> In my lifetime, I call it the big dog era. In my lifetime, they've won a half a national championship, right? right. Since 1960, they won. They, they split a national championship in 97. But they they kind of act like there's something that they're not. Well, they've won a thousand games. Okay, fine. But you know, what have you done in the last 50 years? Um, having said that, so I think Vegas reacts to that a little bit. You know, um, I know Michigan fans. I got one Michigan fan that calls my show every day. And he insists that Alabama should be a seven to ten point favorite in the game. <laughs> so, on. so it's uh, you know that that's a whole other issue. But to the issue of of trick plays, um, they're not going to win a game like this again. This is big boy football. This is not smoke and mirrors. Um, so yeah, maybe they try and you know get something like that done. But um, if you're going to rely on that, you're you're not you're in trouble in the game. J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback for the Wolverines, kind of reminds me of a Jay Barker type. He just wins. 25-1 and one as a starter. Uh, you, you, you look at him and what he did towards the end of the season, only one touchdown in his last four games. Some of us felt like maybe he was hurt. He didn't really even throw the ball against Penn State. That was also a game, though, that Jim Harbaugh was suspended suddenly. You know, Maybe everyone was worried about play calling there. But uh, you got to give the guy credit for being able to win football games. The only loss he had was was last year in the college football playoff. Yeah, um, maybe he didn't have as much intel down the stretch as he had in the past, <laughs> you know, and, and that might have hurt him a little bit too. He's going to have to be mobile today for them to win. He has to do something with his legs for them to win. They were not an explosive team; only five touchdown passes over twenty yards in the entire season, as compared to seventeen for Alabama, for example. Um, so they're not explosive that way. They run the ball well. He has to be a part of the running attack for them. Um, but let's not get lost in the weeds here. We, we talk about, you know, J.J. McCarthy and his record and winning all these football games. That's a great defense. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a team. That's a number one defense in the country. Um, they only allow nine and a half points a game. Um, you're going to win a lot of football games if your defense only allows nine and a half points a game. So, I, I you know, I, I tend to. I don't know how many times I've watched the game and I said, wow, look at J.J. McCarthy put that team on his back and carry them. That's not usually the way it goes. Yeah, no, I'm with you. So give me your prediction. What's going to happen? I think that uh, Alabama gets up early and and is able to kind of build on a lead and Michigan gets a little bit desperate and maybe they can do something. Uh, I think defensively they'll, they'll, they'll hunker down. 
But I think ultimately Alabama wins this game. I'm going to say they're going to win it 27 to 17, something like that. Then who's going to win the uh, the game that's coming up afterwards, right? The Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Uh, between I like Texas. Texas and I mean, I think it's a, I think it's an all SEC final, if you will. <laughs> I, no, I like Texas. You know, Washington has surprised us. I did not think Washington was a nine and a half point dog against Oregon in the, in the Pac-12 championship game, and I thought Oregon was going to beat the brakes off them, and mm-hmm. I was stunned with the way Washington played. So Washington will surprise you, but I like Texas, man. I like the I like the size and the speed. Um, I think Texas wins that football game. I think they're four, four and a half point favorite, something like that. And, um, you know, I, I think we're looking at a rematch of week two for the national championship game. Oh, I'd love that. And we'll preview it here on the Bama football tailgate show. Tell everyone about you, Tom, how they can follow you and what you got going on. Of course, we got our app at 97.7 ESPN The Zone. You can get that app and listen anywhere at any time, uh, noon to two. And then everything is archived as well. And so you can listen to it at other times. Uh, as well. And and that's where you'll find us. We are uh, uh, back and at it uh, tomorrow. Uh, and looking forward to that. We'll be recapping everything tomorrow as that went on during the bowl season and, and especially uh, in the final four. So that's where you can find us. And, and on uh, X, formerly Twitter, at Tom Abraham Show is where I'm at, at Tom Abraham Show. Awesome. That's Tom Abraham and the segment presented by visit Sevierville.com. Great time to go up to the mountains and, uh, and hang out you, now that Christmas and all the holidays are over, start to think about summer going to places like Dollywood and uh, the uh, smoky mountains, visit Sevierville.com. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk with Andrew bone about recruiting more of the original Bama football tailgate show next. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, has been making beer in America for six generations. And for nearly 200 years, we've been all about bringing the good times. By hand. By foot. By bike. By bikers. By fanny pack or jet pack. By whatever means necessary. With Yingling traditional lager, good times taste even better. Yingling, bring the goods. Autumn brings vivid colors to the back roads and hollows of Sevierville, Tennessee. Wind your way to quaint country churches, a historic covered bridge, and even a pick-your-own-apple orchard. This fall, the best views are yours on Sevierville's Rocky Flats Fall Driving Tour. Learn more and find additional fall drives to enjoy at visitsevierville.com forward slash fall. Immerse yourself in the continuing dynasty of Alabama football with The Legacy Continues, a visually striking image from artist Daniel A. Moore. This sequel to Moore's 1992 sold-out painting, The Crimson Legacy, features iconic moments and memorabilia from the last 30 seasons of Tide football. Don't miss your opportunity to own this lasting tribute sure to be cherished by Bama fans for years to come. Pre-order The Legacy Continues now at DanielMoreArt.com. Hey y'all, it's Jennifer from The Floor of Bama, and we're excited that football is back. The Floor of Bama is proud to support Alabama football, and we invite you to join us at Floor of Bama Oliver Grill for a game day experience like no other. We have over 40 TVs and a brand new game day menu that includes endless wings, Santa Fe egg rolls, street corn nachos, and so much more. Bring your friends and join us for all the college and NFL games. Floor of Bama's Oil River Grill, open at 11 a.m. daily, right across the street from the world-famous Floor of Bama. Barry Buckner for Genesis of Tuscaloosa. You heard it said, affordable luxury. But when it comes to affordable service, every new Genesis we sell comes with three-year, 36,000-mile complimentary service. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. Genesis of Tuscaloosa.com. Ownership limitations may apply. See your retailer for details. Genesis reserves the right to change program without notice. Exclusions may apply. 
Do you consider yourself a black sheep, misfit, or screwball? If so, we've got the perfect drink for you. Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Screwball combines two of America's favorite, peanut butter and whiskey. Enjoy it neat, on the rocks, or in your favorite cocktail. Screwball, the original most awarded peanut butter whiskey, is now available near you. Go to screwballwhiskey.com for more information. Enjoy responsibly. Advertisement by Screwball Spirits, LLC, San Diego, California. Whiskey with natural flavors, 30 Tuscaloosa is Alabama's ultimate sports destination and a place for outdoor enthusiasts to thrive. It's a community rooted in history and one that's on the cusp of a burgeoning art scene too. Tuscaloosa is vibrant, it's charming, and it's familiar. Its people welcome you with open arms and warm hellos into a community that's tied together. Tuscaloosa is our home this is my great escape where there's real gaming excitement and i can be who i want to be in a sea of slots taking in the big pot and always doubling down our friends ask what do y'all do at pearl river resort no work all play winner winner chicken dinner just keeping it real baby real players real winning real fun at pearl river resort Welcome back to the original Bama football tailgate show as the Crimson Tide gets set to take on the Michigan Wolverines, Alabama playing number one for the second consecutive week. And it's great to have you guys here across the state of Alabama for this uh, radio program, which previews Alabama football before every single game. We're brought to you by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery. And it is great to talk with the man, the myth and the legend all in one Andrew Bone from uh, on three and uh, Bama online. Bone, what's up, dude? How you been? Been good. You know, trying to get through the holidays. It's been uh, it's been fun, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we're back back in uh, back in business. As they get set to take on Michigan, who are some other players in the transfer portal that you see that could? join this class, if you will, that Alabama has put together that's number two right now, according to uh, Bama Online and on three? Well, I don't want to name any any players right now because I think Alabama is still trying to keep a lot of that in-house. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they would also uh, – you know, I think they're also trying to get through you know, the Rose Bowl, uh, win, or, win or lose, and then they'll try to – you know, they'll figure out Who's coming back to the team? What what positions they really need to add somebody? Um, what are going to be the the biggest priorities? And I think you know they also wanted to get through the early signing period. Who was who were they going to sign? Who would they potentially lose? Um, and I think offensive line certainly an area that they could add somebody. Defensive line and they only signed three defensive linemen. Signed three offensive linemen. Um, you know, defensive back, you know, with Damani Jackson, obviously that's an area that they would like to add somebody. So those are probably the, the areas that, that they're going to be looking at pretty hard um, over the next couple of weeks. Once this game's over and then hopefully there's another game um, in Houston, right, against the winner of Texas and Washington, are, are we going to see a lot of transfers from Alabama? I mean, is that – I don't even know how this all works anymore. I mean, is that something that we should expect – can they stick around until after the bowl games um, to to decide that they're going to transfer, or is there some kind of like waiting period that you have to have? What are the restrictions? Yeah, so I think we're going to probably you know I, the, that date opens up again on the fourth, so I think you're going to see you know some guys that are going to enter the portal from Alabama, guys that just you know didn't see the field, you know didn't didn't get any action you know during the uh, during the Rose Bowl. I think we're going to see. Uh, you know, a slew of those guys start entering the portal. I mean, basically, there's going to have to be some guys that enter the portal for Alabama to have, be able to, you know, fill up their um, or to meet their scholarship requirements there. So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see who all enters because there's probably a lot of you know, back channel conversations happening with guys who, you know, might be on the second team uh, and, you know, the first team guys coming back next season. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, so there's probably a lot of back channel conversations happening, trying to influence some guys to uh, to enter the portal and you know quickly commit to uh, to their school. So we'll see what happens, um, you know, over the coming days. But I, I be willing to bet that there are some guys that Alabama is certainly having to um, you know recruit to stay. Um, you know, it's not just guys that you know they're trying to you know. Or they're not trying, but they're you know, saying, all right, maybe it's a good idea for you to enter the portal. There's going to be some guys that they're going to be fighting hard for uh, to keep uh, so that they don't go somewhere else. Hanging out with Andrew Bone from Bama Online and On3, talking uh, Crimson Tide recruiting like we do uh, every week on the show. We've been doing it for a long time, Bone. Let's just get your thoughts on this matchup, Alabama and Michigan. What do you think when you see these two teams, and how do you feel like this game's going to play out? I, I probably haven't watched as much Michigan as, uh, as a lot of other people have, but um, you know I do know from a recruiting perspective, um, you know Alabama, you know both schools recruit really well. I think Alabama probably has um, you know a little bit more speed on the outside. You know they've got some, you know uh, they've got the big bodies on the offensive and defensive front. We always talk about um, you know the Big Ten always you know likes to. Uh, you know, talk about how big their guys are, uh, how physical. But, um, you know, you saw the, the physicality that the Alabama uh, players had in that uh, game against Georgia. Um, you know, they can go toe-to-toe with just about anybody. So um, I, I think the speed is going to be a little bit of a difference. Uh, the explosiveness from, uh, from Jalen Milrow, you know, Bond, Burton, um, I think that's going to kind of be the difference. Uh, in the game. So I like Alabama here today. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup, obviously. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure on, uh, on Harbaugh and Michigan because, you know, they haven't been able to kind of go in and win those, those big games. And, you know, we saw what kind of transpired throughout the season with the, uh, uh, with the spy gate and, um, and it's, uh, you know, I, I think he was. I think Harbaugh was suspended, but maybe five or six games during. Yeah, during six the of them, right? Six Half the season. season. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if they're America's team <laughs> at all, but uh, obviously uh, Alabama has certainly been one of those teams throughout the last uh, decade that everybody uh, outside of you know Alabama, you know, they'd love to see those. Uh, let's see Alabama lose, but I don't know if that's the case uh, today. There may be more people cheering for Alabama than uh, than Michigan, so be a fun game to watch. We're looking forward to it. Bone, tell us about everything that you guys have going on at Bama Online and on three. And I got to say this: what a great crew uh, with our buddy Clint Lamb and Tim Watts and Travis Ryer, Shannon Terry, the guy that owns everything's a Bama guy too. It's just a good. Seems like the, there's a lot of great Bama coverage coming from you guys these days. Yeah, you know, we're, obviously we're not just a uh, recruiting website. Um, you know, BamaOnline.com covered all you know from football to basketball, you know, all these other sports. Um, you know, obviously my bread and butter is uh, is recruiting, but um, you know, we've got a great team over there. You know, a lot of um, a lot of coverage. Um, you know, really anything that you want to uh, to talk about Alabama sports related, it's there. So come check us out if you're an Alabama fan. Uh, it's definitely the place to be. I mean, just thousands and thousands of Alabama fans on our site uh, every single day communicating with us. I mean, we're, we're having uh, you know, direct conversations with our subscribers. Um, so we come on there, talk to me, uh, talk to our staff, read our content, and, um, you know, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the time at BamaOnline.com. And I tell you guys this, I, I read a lot of the comments that come on our site, but they want to know about Bone. Bone is what you see is what you get, man. And I think that is a big compliment to you, Bone, and what you guys are doing. Uh, thanks for coming on. And I want to remind all of you guys to use the promo code BAMA Tailgate for 15% off right now of anything at New Life Art that's regularly priced or up until, well, you, you today's the last day. You got to use this right now or it's going to be expired. And that is Grave Digger. 25 for 25 dollars off your fourth and 31 print and that bone you've got to get the fourth and 31 i mean you 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 have you ever seen a finish like that before uh, well you know i saw saw a second and 26 that was pretty nice um, <laughs> yeah. for the title right 
Yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, fourth and thirty-one. I mean, I, I'm sure there's gonna be. I'm sure that's gonna be in a, in a lot of um, a lot of households. Yeah, everybody's walls. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. That's the first hour of the show. When we come back, we'll crank it up for hour two of the original Bama football tailgate show. Flight by Yingling is the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. Alabama's ultimate sports destination and a place for outdoor enthusiasts to thrive. It's a community rooted in history and one that's on the cusp of a burgeoning art scene too. Tuscaloosa is vibrant, it's charming, and it's familiar. Its people welcome you with open arms and warm hellos into a community that's tied together. Tuscaloosa is our home. Hey guys, it's Chad Anderson. You already know how stellar and amazing our work on YouTube is. Now imagine how much I can help you with a mortgage, real estate financing, short-term rental knowledge, or setting up your investments properly and saving you thousands on taxes. My teams have helped over 10,000 families in my career. Would love for you to visit chadanderson.info to set up a private conversation with me. And yes, it'll be me who calls you. That's chadanderson.info. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 372289. Hey y'all, it's Jennifer from the Floribama and it's time for Floribama Fun Facts. The Floribama first opened in 1964 and we're celebrating our 59th year of doing it on the line. We host over 150 events every year, including mullet toss, Oktoberfest, Halloween costume party, Frank Brown songwriters, Thanksgiving and Christmas potluck, the biggest New Year's Eve party, and of course, the polar bear plunge on January 1st. All the events, including our live music schedule, are available online at floribama.com. Immerse yourself in the continuing dynasty of Alabama football with The The Legacy Legacy Continues, a visually striking image from artist Daniel A. Moore. This sequel to Moore's 1992 sold-out painting, The Crimson Legacy, features iconic moments and memorabilia from the last 30 seasons of Tide football. Don't miss your opportunity to own this lasting tribute sure to be cherished by Bama fans for years to come. Pre-order The Legacy Continues now at DanielMoreArt.com. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, has been making beer in America for six generations. And for nearly 200 years, we've been all about bringing the good times. By hand. By foot. By bike. By bikers. By fanny pack or jet pack. By whatever means necessary. With Yingling traditional lager, good times taste even better. Yingling, bring the goods. R&R Cigars invites you to the Cigar Mansion in downtown Tuscaloosa. The best cigar selection and bourbon in the southeast awaits you. 2703 6th Street, downtown Tuscaloosa, near Home 2 Suites or Northport, next to Winn-Dixie. TheCigarMansion.com See yourself in Sevierville, Tennessee. Your Smokies start here. This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort.
Welcome to the second hour of the original Bama football tailgate show as we get you ready for the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Michigan Wolverines. And I uh, want to tell you that our show is proudly presented by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery, and also by our friends at Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi, where the Time Out Sports Lounge is. That's where you can go and uh, wager on Alabama football or anything legally go check it out you got the nfl you got the nhl you got the nba you got college basketball you got international sports like soccer they got it all 20 tvs in the timeout sports lounge where you can watch uh, kiosks where you, you got a counter that you can make your bets and it's a uh, it's a lot of fun over there an hour and a half from tuscaloosa maybe two hours from birmingham alabama takes on michigan three o'clock the rose bowl game and uh obviously Pasadena, and a guy that had the opportunity to play there for the Crimson Tide in 2009 is Mike Johnson. And it is always great to talk with our old buddy and our uh, old broadcast partner himself, Mike Johnson. And uh, we got the opportunity to do that. And anytime you hang out with Mike, it's a lot of fun. But he talked about Alabama's head coach Nick Saban and a lot more and here's our conversation man it's good to talk to you I uh I know it's been a while but I miss uh I miss chopping it up with some with some Bama folks on the daily man I've been uh been working this week with the uh, Georgia guy Randy McMichael I usually work with a bunch of Georgia people over here in Atlanta man so it's good to finally talk some some Tide yeah yeah we talked a lot of Tide back in the day and now you're in Atlanta doing radio there, Falcons football and uh, and, and and Georgia stuff every day. Um, what was it like when Alabama beat Georgia again? Now you work there. Were people angry at you? Well, listen, man, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know me. I'm, I'm the, uh, you know, when you uh, when you lose, say little. When you win, say less. Um, <laughs> and, that, and, and that's the best thing. I'll drink to that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to be honest with you, man, and, and here's you in Atlanta beer for you, a little sweet water. Yeah, uh, I like sweet water. You and I actually did a show from there one time. I know. Uh, it was awesome. Now that I think about it. No, man, it's uh, it's been one of those things that's um, it's been a lot of fun because you don't have to say anything. You know what I mean? It's uh, you just kind of, hey, you know, how's it going? And uh, you know, you just wait for that conversation to kind of wrap back around to, uh, hey, I played a good game. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Great job, guys. Come on. <laughs> hey, how, when you look at this offensive line, of course, you were a two-time All-American and, and you were on the uh, 09 championship team. How the hell did these guys pull it together like this? They were, they were as they say in the business, throwing guys out of the club uh, against Georgia. I mean, you go from where this team was against Texas and at the beginning of the season to where they are right now. How the hell did they get there? Well, I mean, I think, I think really, and it, you know, it starts and ends with Caden Proctor. I think he's he he started to understand uh, more of the fundamentals. Um, you know, I, I listen, man. You and I have had this conversation a dozen times. I'm an offensive lineman before I'm anything else, mm -hmm, uh, right? And so, you know, when you weigh 360 pounds, it's it's all about balance. I, I think that so many times. As an 18 year old, you, you think to yourself, oh, I need to fire off the line and hit somebody in the mouth. And that's not technically true for an offensive lineman. It's it's more about can I hit somebody with both of my feet on the ground? Um, you know, as an 18 year old, you kind of want to get in that track stance. And a lot of times when you make contact, you have one foot in the air and the other foot on the ground and you can kind of lose balance and, you know, become disengaged. And I, honestly, as, as you move throughout the season, I thought Caden Proctor just did a, a better job of, of, you know, staying balanced uh, on contact. And you mentioned it. I mean, Nazir Stackhouse is a name that I feel like was thrown, uh, you know, around Atlanta the entire season. Um, and multiple times in that game against Alabama, he was just flat out, uh, you know, no white tees. We used to call those kind of bucks. Get out the club, man. No white tees allowed. Uh, so, yeah, he, you know, he was getting, you know, thrown out the box a little bit. So, I mean, I just think it's all about balance. It's all about attention to detail. When you work as hard as a Nick Saban coach team does, uh, then those details are going to get there when you don't practice hard. And, you know, you have coaches that, you know, maybe look past the details or, you know, don't make you practice hard on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Sometimes they don't, those don't, you know, come about throughout the season. So I think Nick just does such a good job of kind of holding those players accountable and, and making sure that they're focused on what they need to do. And you saw it come around. I mean, they've always had the talent. They've always had the big bodies. Um, when you can, when you can put double teams together um, and you have, 700 pounds uh, coming at somebody, then you're going to have some success. So 
I thought they did a nice job of just uh, focusing on the details down the stretch, man. And uh, we saw it pay off uh, against some really good, a really good defense in Georgia. And um, he had a lot of success up front. You and I covered the 2015 season together on radio. And uh, we watched all of those games. We went to the championship game together. And this team has been compared to the 2015 team. And, and I was late on the wagon. I mean, I even do a show with Jay Coker, Ryan, Ryan Anderson. Both of those guys will come in here. We'll talk about it. And I didn't want to buy into it. But now I'm starting to think maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this team really is like, uh, you know, like, okay, you guys are right. I, I didn't see it at the beginning of the year. But now I'm starting to kind of feel like this team is kind of a lot like 2015. I like to call that team the Joel Klatt team uh, because of his take early in the season after that loss to uh, Ole Miss that, you know, Nick Saban was washed up. Uh, Lane Kiffin <laughs> wasn't a good fit. They're not the <laughs> dominant team up front that they once were, and that program's kind of washed. I actually tweeted at Lane and at Joel a couple of years ago that clip, and I said, you know, after this clip, uh, Derrick Henry would go on to set the single-season rushing record. Uh, Bama would win the national title. Derrick Henry wins the Heisman. Uh, you know, all of the above. I mean, it just, they, it, you know, and, and I think a lot of these Bama teams are similar. Um, obviously, 2009, 2020 are the only teams that went undefeated without the hiccups in the year. And, and, and sometimes you need that kick in the butt, right? Sometimes these guys have to have that kick in the butt of showing back up and kind of being embarrassed on a national stage and having the highlight reels run uh, throughout the day and in the food hall and seeing, you know, how bad you got whooped and having the whispers of Bama's not the same and Nick Saban's falling off and he's lost his fastball. And, um, you know, sometimes you need that. And so I think those two teams do have that in common where you got that kind of loss to a, a spread team that kind of made you look goofy at certain points in the game. And uh, I think, I think they do it differently offensively. Obviously Milrow is kind of the Derrick Henry, I guess, personality of those offenses, but, I think, I think it's a pretty good comparison just when you look at how those teams kind of came along throughout the season. Yeah, yeah. well, it feels that way. And if they can complete the mission, you know, maybe we'll be talking about them. But still got two games left to go, including one in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. Uh, I was there. I thought it was just a tremendous environment. It was like the Wrigley Field of college football. You played in that game. What was that experience like? You know, um, I'll never forget how beautiful it was. Let me say that first and foremost. I mean, it's just as picturesque as you. And, and honestly, when I look back on it, Mick, it feels kind of surreal. I mean, I, I've told you the story before of Keith Jackson being there at the coin toss. I mean, <laughs> it's it's such a different dynamic now for these guys because Bama's been there. Bama is the dynasty. When we went to 2009, it had been 17 years. I mean, it was like, you know, we, we were – it was a newfound thing. And so – yeah, I'm showing up. We, we we practiced at Orange Coast College all week, 65 degrees and sunny. You know, there was my first four years in college when you went to a bowl game, it was, hey, let's go find a bar. Let's find, uh, you know, whatever we need to do. It was none of that. I think we found an O'Charlie's one night. Me and a couple what, what games did you go to? Not not the sidestep you hear, but I think no, I was at uh, some of them. The, the Cotton Bowl. Went to uh, that one. Uh, went to two back-to-back Independence Bowls. Me too. Me too. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at. Okay, so you were there too. I don't know. Yeah. We've ever talked about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a lot of fun. And then obviously the Sugar Bowl. Which, yeah, um, right. Okay. Uh, you know, everybody everybody overlooks the fact that you know, I didn't play much in that game, and Andre Smith didn't play at all. Um, so you got hurt early. I, yeah, let's not bring up that. That was a that was well, bad. Listen, if, it, if, it, if the quarterback and running back had been hurt, then we'd be, you know, that'd be the, what people talk about about that game. But <laughs> left tackle and left guard get hurt. And that's, that's not really where you want to point. But uh, yeah. And then obviously past the end of the following year. So, man, we just, I, I just remember us being down to business out there, man. It was picturesque. You get on the field, you know, it was back still in, a, in an era where uh, flash photography was still kind of a thing back in the Oh, time. man. You know what Dude, I mean? You I see it, man. Yeah. I, I can see the kickoff. Yeah. The burnt orange and the crimson and the flashes. Now that you've mentioned it, like yeah. I can, I can see that. And you know what? You're right. We don't have that anymore. Don't have it anymore. Uh, yeah. Keith Jackson does the coin flip, and he says, uh, "You know, they call this place the hallowed grounds." And in the most Keith Jackson voice, he says, uh, "Gentlemen, good luck." <laughs> and I'll never forget as long as I live, man. Uh, you know, God rest his soul, man. I'll never forget as long as I live. Who the, was the other captains out there with you? Uh, Rolando and Javier, Rolando McLean, Javier Arenas. Um, okay. I'll never forget. We had the strangest national anthem in the history of national title games. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget it, man, because it's one of the things you don't forget. Do you remember who played the national anthem at that game? 
<laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> the weirdest combination of people that have ever done a national anthem at a national title game. It was Josh Groban. God knows where that guy's at nowadays. Yeah, Josh yeah, Groban. Right. Hot, uh, hot back then, though. Hot name back then. Josh Groban, and it was flanked by Fleet from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> I mean, like I was probably but, getting a drink to be honest yeah, with you. I, mean, I don't remember they, that. They, yeah. You know, they set off the fireworks. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, and I just remember thinking, oh, this is cool. But I thought, man, what a random pair of people, man. Like Josh Groban <laughs> and Flea. All right. Well, you know, it's not exactly Whitney Houston, but I'll take it. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and I, I'll tell you another thing I remember, uh, just a quick story. I remember the turf. You know, that was one of the first years that they did the actual bowl game and the BCS national title. You know, before that, it was like the Rose Bowl was the BCS national title. Right. They wanted to add that fifth game. And you remember, I, I can't remember who it was that played in the in the, in the Rose Bowl that year, the oh, actual yeah. Rose Bowl, but they brought in all new turf. They brought yeah. in a completely new field in one week's time. I want to say it was Oregon and somebody. It might have been. It might have been. Um, but it was one week's time. It may have been Oregon and Ohio State. Uh, but it was one week's time they brought in a whole new turf. I remember looking down at the turf the whole time, thinking, man, the grass is kind of long, but yeah, man. But yeah, that's uh, random How did memories. It play? Random memories. It was all right. Um, I think it I think it suited us well for what we were gonna do. You know, we weren't we had speed, but we weren't built on speed. Um, and so I think it ended up suiting us pretty well. Uh USC Penn State. No, it would have the next year. I remember it was a crazy game. I do remember that. Maybe it was a. Uh, it might have been Penn State. I don't know. I, I think I think I'm a year. I think oh nine is really. Oh here it is. Ohio. It is Ohio State. Yeah. Who they play? Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. yeah see, we were right. We were right. Yeah. Never question yourself. No nah, you man. No. Nah. Just go with it. So so when you see this team, when you've watched what these guys have accomplished, let's start with Jalen Milrow. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Where a guy could be, you know, that dazed and confused game two, and then just become, you know, sixth in the Heisman voting by yeah. the end of the season. I, I just, for me, I don't remember ever seeing anything like this. No, um, you don't. And I think it obviously speaks to him and his character. And um, I listen, I went round and round with people, um, you know, at the start of the year that would, you know, call for Ty Buckner and Ty Simpson. And I was just laughed at that. And it's not that I didn't believe that those were good players, but it's funny to hear people question Nick Saban's ruling on who should be playing the quarterback position after he has seen every practice and every throw and broken out every piece of film that people could look at Nick Saban's <laughs> assessment of a quarterback and go, no, no, you know what? We might need the backup, man. Uh, it always just cracked me up. So, I, yeah, I've never seen anything like it, man. He, uh, you know, he struggled so much on the intermediate throws. I think they did a good job. I think Tommy Reese did a good job of taking out what he was not good at. Um, you know, how many times, Mick, did we watch Tua drop back, throw into the flat, uh, you know, run some of the speed screens? He was so good at being accurate into the flat, getting the ball out of his hands, like a shortstop, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, he, he was he was like a shortstop. He'd get, he'd get the snap and throw it out in the flat, and they just stopped trying to do that with Jalen. It was like, dude, you know, this, this isn't really his game. Um, he's got to be more deliberate in his throws. He's got to have more – you know, crossing routes and, and, and some of the things that, uh, you know, get the ball out of his hand with comfortable throws. And so I think, uh, you know, Tommy Reese obviously deserve, deserves a lot of credit, but I, I don't know, you know, people ask about him developing. I don't know if he developed so much the things he was bad at. I think they just stopped trying to do them. <laughs> you know, it was just like, hey, yeah, let's, right. just, what, let's just erase this from the game. But do so many other things well, just narrow it down. Um, not only that, but, you know, obviously the offensive line did come along and uh, allowed him a little bit more leeway. So you're right. I, I've, I've never seen a storyline like it throughout the entirety of a season. Um, and so it's, it's, it's been fun to watch. I mean, I can tell you that. He's a great dude. You listen to all his interviews, man. He makes a lot of Alabama people proud. I can tell you that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to even be associated with him based on the jersey that uh, he wears. So it's been yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I'm with you on that as well. What do you think about Alabama's run game? Uh, didn't have Chase McClellan for the SEC championship. Roy Dell Williams stepped up. Uh, Jam Miller played well. And it doesn't feel like with this offense, you know, you guys played. You had a Heisman Trophy back in Mark Ingram. You, you know who was going to get the ball, right? Maybe a little bit of Trent Richardson in there as well in 2009. This team with the receivers and the running backs, th there's not just a dominant force. They seem to spread it out, and different guys come up each game. Yeah, listen, uh, 
you, you know this more than anybody. I'm a Roy Dell Williams fan. Uh, we've we've talked about this. I'm I'm a massive fan of his, man. To me, he he has that extra half a gap shimmy uh, that you know that that Bama. I think you'd need the punch that Jason McClellan obviously brings. We talk about this with the Falcons all the time, to be honest with you, man. Tyler Algier rushed for a thousand yards for the Atlanta Falcons last year. And what did they reward him with? You brought in an eighth overall pick in B. John Robinson. And, you know, I, but I, I think it's just such a, a, a nice one two punch when the Falcons are successful, kind of a two to one ratio. And right. I think they've got to do, a, a, you know, a better job of sprinkling both those guys in. I think they both bring such a different dynamic. Um, I still wish at times that they would give, um, uh, you know, both those guys the ball in space uh, in the passing game, the, the jump and dump three count screens that uh, we were so good at, uh, you know, back in the 2009 season. But they've allowed them to go north and south. You know, they stopped trying to move east and west with 360 pound tackles and just said, hey, let's throw these guys off the ball. And when they're playing with balance up front, you'll you'll find a seam. I, I, I was I, I haven't been excited about Jace's patience. Um, a lot of the season, but I think that started to come around. And obviously, um, you know, all of those backs that you just mentioned have started to develop a really nice patience as they've gone throughout the year. Mike, you covered the Falcons. Um, when is Kirby going to announce that he's the new head coach? <laughs> Look, man, I, I mean, I, I know that uh, – As I take a drink. You know what's funny is uh, uh, it, uh, the majority of Falcons fans would not like that. No, uh, and it's not because they don't think he would be a good no, NFL no. head coach. It's because enemy they number him, one. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't want him to leave to Georgia. Uh, no, man, I think he, I think he actually had this conversation today with Randy McMichael, who I was mentioning is a you know former Georgia player, but he played for Nick in Miami with the Dolphins and wow. Will Muschamp and a lot of those guys. And so I was kind of asking him, you know, what what was Nick like as a as a NFL head coach and. You know, he said he's a lot more relaxed, so they used to, you know, kind of play pranks on him from from time to time. And I just thought that would be just like Kirby. You know, if Kirby ever got an NFL job, he would be, uh, you know, he'd he'd be allowed to be a lot more relaxed. Um, but look, man, I, I don't know what the future holds. They're, they're trying to decide who the quarterback is, trying to decide if the head coach is going to stick mm-hmm. around. They still have an outside shot in the playoffs at seven and eight, which uh, I think is kind of to the downfall of the entire NFL right now. But I don't know, man. I I, could, I couldn't tell you what that team's going to be week to week. I, I know this much, Mick. They're not good playing outside, uh, which is not good. Uh, <laughs> they leave the man. dome, right? They, they leave the dome, man. They, they, uh, they ain't very good. They ain't very good. So, well, we'll when last question for you, um, you know Nick Saban. You played for Nick Saban. I, I've seen your handprints out in front of uh, Danny Chimes, seen your rings before. You, you know all about Alabama's head coach. Um, is this it for him if he wins? Oh, I get this question a lot. I don't think so. Um, I, I I don't think win or lose. I don't think he's done. I, I think that you know. I, listen, everybody points to the the beach house, um, the car dealerships, the you know where where college football is. I think that Nick wants a crack at the twelve man uh, playoff mm-hmm. that you're going to see. I I think in I think in Nick's head, or at least a little bit in the back of his head, you have to think that Nick probably thinks, dude, if there's a twelve man playoff for my whole career, we. we We'd even ripped off a couple more natties. You know what I mean? Like that's the way I look at it. Like 2010. You used to be able to to keep, yeah, right. You used to be able to keep those. uh, You know, when you had two teams going, it was like last year. Yeah, when you had two teams going, it was like, man, you could kind of keep. You could find an excuse to keep Nick out. Then when you went to four teams, you've almost found an excuse to keep him in a couple times, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. this year being one of those, it's like, dude, they've proven themselves. I mean, what's what's Nick's record in semifinal games? What's what's Coach Saban's record? I know I went to one loss in the Sugar Bowl in 14, but that's that's it. That's it, right? I mean, so when I look at it from that angle, man, I, I have to think that he he thinks, well, if I can just stick through a couple of these 12 team playoffs, get. I mean, it was announced today, right, that you're going to get the home game uh, in the in the quarterfinal a week before Christmas. I mean, dude, come on, right? I mean, if you're if you're recruiting at Alabama and you have a home quarterfinal game, not that I want them to be in that game because that means they didn't get the buy. Mm-hmm. But you have a home quarterfinal game a week before Christmas. You can't tell me that Nick wouldn't have a little bit of uh, success bringing some of those recruits in there, some of that NIL money. I don't know. I, I, a lot of people think that. I just don't think this is it. I, I think he's got at least one more. Um, I actually said three years ago that I thought he had five more. Um, I just don't. I don't know what he's going to do, Mick. I, I don't. Have, I, you know, haven't been around him. Haven't had conversations with him. I don't know. I don't know what else he's going to do. He doesn't strike me as. 
this is the guy who pulled me on an, on a tube on his boat wearing slacks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, like, what are we doing? You know, he's not, he's not going to go sit and, and, and put his toes in the sand of the beach, man. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's his last year either way. I think he gets at least one more crack at it, if not more, because I think he is going to have success in the 12 team. And um, we'll see, man. I, I, it's, a, it's such a different program than it was 10 years ago. For the successes and, and you know, what they've done this year, um, he seems to be having a good time. And so we'll, we'll see. Well, that's it for Mike Johnson, uh, but that's not it for the show. Coming up, we're going to talk with Chris Stewart from the Crimson Tide Sports Network, the voice of Alabama football out in Pasadena. Let me remind you guys that we're brought to you by our friends over at Pearl River Resort. This segment was and the Golden Moon Co Hotel and Casino. The Time Out Sports Lounge offers traditional sports betting in which guests can bet on all professional league sports and major league sporting events. Bet on your favorite teams and catch the game from the comfort of our beautiful timeout lounge. 20 TVs with feeds of all the major sports networks, 12 state-of-the-art wager boards, uh, three wager stations, and a full bar. And don't forget, Ron White is going to be at Pearl River Resort coming up in February. Find out all you need to know at Pearl River Resort. When we come back, we're going to talk to Chris Stewart, more of the original Bama Football Tailgate Show after this. <laughs> Light by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling. Available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. Alabama's ultimate sports destination and a place for outdoor enthusiasts to thrive. It's a community rooted in history and one that's on the cusp of a burgeoning art scene too. Tuscaloosa is vibrant, it's charming, and it's familiar. Its people welcome you with open arms and warm hellos into a community that's tied together. Tuscaloosa is our home. Hey guys, it's Chad Anderson. You already know how stellar and amazing our work on YouTube is. Now imagine how much I can help you with a mortgage, real estate financing, short-term rental knowledge, or setting up your investments properly and saving you thousands on taxes. My teams have helped over 10,000 families in my career. Would love for you to visit chatanderson.info to set up a private conversation with me. And yes, it'll be me who calls you. That's chatanderson.info. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 372289. Hey y'all, it's Jennifer from the Floribama and it's time for Floribama Fun Facts. The Floribama first opened in 1964 and we're celebrating our 59th year of doing it on the line. We host over 150 events every year including mullet toss, Oktoberfest, Halloween costume party, Frank Brown songwriters, Thanksgiving and Christmas potluck, the biggest New Year's Eve party, and of course, the polar bear plunge on January 1st. All the events including our live music schedule are available online at floribama.com. Immerse yourself in the continuing dynasty of Alabama football with The Legacy Continues, a visually striking image from artist Daniel A. Moore. This sequel to Moore's 1992 sold-out painting, The Crimson Legacy, features iconic moments and memorabilia from the last 30 seasons of Tide football. Don't miss your opportunity to own this lasting tribute sure to be cherished by Bama fans for years to come. Pre-order The Legacy Continues now at DanielMoreArt.com. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, has been making beer in America for six generations. And for nearly 200 years, we've been all about bringing the good times. By hand. By foot. By bike. By bikers. By fanny pack or jet pack. By whatever means necessary. With Yingling traditional lager, good times taste even better. Yingling, bring the goods. R&R Cigars invites you to the Cigar Mansion in downtown Tuscaloosa. The best cigar selection and bourbon in the southeast awaits you. 2703 6th Street, downtown Tuscaloosa, near Home 2 Suites, or Northport, next to Winn-Dixie. TheCigarMansion.com
see yourself in Sevierville, Tennessee. Your Smokies start here. This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort. Welcome back to the original Bama football tailgate show as we preview Alabama and Michigan in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Remind you guys that our show is presented by Yingling Lager, America's oldest brewery. And this segment is brought to you by Genesis of Tuscaloosa. Don't forget about that award-winning service department there on the corner of Hargrove and Skyland Boulevard. And say hi to our good buddy, Barry Buckner, next time you're in the area. All right, it is a pleasure to talk to my old broadcast partner and the voice of the Crimson Tide. He'll be on the call when Alabama and Michigan kick off today. Uh, Chris Stewart, what's up, brother? Man, I am uh, always love talking to you. And excited about the opportunity today. This uh, is really, really special. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge game in so many different aspects, right? First off, the winner goes to the national championship. Secondly, <laughs> we're in the midst of the greatest dynasty in college football history with the greatest coach ever, right? But you still want to get that next title. Sure. And, and I wanted your perspective. If Alabama wins – it would be the first time ever that a team has beaten the consensus number one back-to-back -back weeks or back-to-back -back games, obviously not yeah. weeks, but games. No, that's crazy, isn't it? Uh, you know, and it was just a year ago I got to do the play-by-play -play for consecutive wins for Alabama basketball over the number one ranked team in the country in the AP poll when they beat uh, – well, I didn't do the first one. I'm sorry, Roger Hoover had that call when they beat uh, North Carolina, North Carolina. I was trying to think of the blue bloods. I was going, no, it wasn't Kentucky. It wasn't UCLA. It was North <laughs> Carolina that they beat in a neutral site game and then came back the next week. And we won in Houston uh, against the Cougars in a packed house. So yeah, that was special. And in this obviously uh, very, very rare opportunity, but one that I think they're ready for and uh, so excited about the chance to play Michigan. And, uh, you know, they say your first reaction is usually your most honest one. And if that is indeed the case, it was very telling what the Wolverines' reaction was when they saw that their opponent would not be Florida State, but it would instead be the Crimson Tide. Yeah, that bye week they thought they had, well, that's not the case. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, it changed a lot. What, when you look at this matchup, give me your breakdown of it. I know Michigan has that really stout, deep defensive line. They yeah. lost their, you know, their would be first round pick offensive lineman due to an injury against Ohio State. They've got a, a quarterback that's kind of a Jay Barker type. I mean, the guy just does nothing but win. And JJ McCarthy, your breakdown of this matchup. No, I, I agree with the things you said. I, they are physically dominant with their size and their strength. Alabama, I think, is going to be comparable to them in size and strength. Uh, but the, the real difference maker, I think, will be the speed. And we often see this. And it's one of the reasons Michigan and Ohio State have separated themselves, not only tr the tradition, but what they've done in the Big Ten to, to go uh, – and be who they've always been from a size standpoint, but add a little bit of speed, especially at the skill positions. I think that's one reason that they're head and shoulders above the rest of that conference. But they don't have the amount of speed across the board that the elite teams from the Southeastern Conference have. Mm -hmm. And Alabama, obviously, as the league champion, falls into that category. And most importantly, this team's playing some of its best football right now or was, you know, after 
or going into and in, in, in that Georgia game. So I, I'm very excited about the matchup. Definitely not overconfident. You uh, you don't play well, and not only can you get beat, you can get embarrassed. This Michigan team is that good. But Alabama is back in a position where I think if they play uh, the way we know they're capable of now, because we've seen it with our own eyes, that type of effort would be good enough to to get a win in advance. The other part of that, too, is that Michigan hasn't really been tested at the level they'll be tested in this game. Alabama has been literally down to its last shot in one. Bama's had to bleed the clock and win at least two ball games. And, and I think of that with the one that started the run mm-hmm. with the final six minutes against South Florida down in Tampa but also obviously the most recent game where they just bled the clock and would not give it back to Georgia and won that in a really impressive manner in Atlanta. So uh, those type of things, and obviously the the fourth and 31 in Auburn, those things I think help make them more battle-tested if this one goes to the wire, which it would be foolish to think that anything other than that would happen with two teams as good as these are. Can you remember a quarterback developing as much as Jalen Milrow has in front yeah. of our eyes in one season? And who would you compare it to? I've done it from the start before he started the rally, before he became this. I said when he lost his job to South in, in the South Florida game, I reminded people I know that their styles are different. I know that their uh, their way of going about it is different. But the situation to me was almost identical to your broadcast partner, Jake Coker. And I thought he had a chance to be Jake 2.0. Uh, 1.0 was really good, by the way, when Jake <laughs> hears this. <laughs> yeah, I'm he'll just be going, happy. I'm going Your biggest the fan, by the way. Your biggest uh, fan, by the way. You well, know that. It's it's a mutual admiration society because this, this dude I have uh, so much respect for for so many reasons. but. It's genuine what I say in that the the circumstances were set up for Jalen to be the guy. I mean, you remember um, Jake came in from Florida State with all the accolades. You remember he was on the Heisman watch list going into not his senior year, his junior year, before he'd taken a snap in an Mm -hmm. Alabama uniform, before he won the job in in a job that he didn't win his junior year. I know. That That was Blake's. And, and Blake did a phenomenal job in winning the position. But Jake didn't transfer back out somewhere else. Of course, I know rules were different then. He didn't pout. He was not the clear-cut guy going into the season. There was a brief time where he wasn't the starter. And then when he ran over that DB from <laughs> Georgia on a rainy day in Athens, uh, yeah, that team became his. Yeah, And that from that time forward, there was no doubt this was his football team. I think the same can be said for Jalen Milrow. Was it not the Ole Miss game where he throws the touchdown pass and and he gets knocked to the deck and they have to scrape him up and then he pops to his feet? Yeah. We thought he might have died. (laughs) It's almost the Jerry Maguire thing, man. Show me the money. Uh, I mean, he pops up and starts running towards uh, the guy that made the catch and he's ready to go. And I just think from that moment forward, it's clearly been his football team. Sink or swim, we were going to be whoever we became with Jalen Milrow as a quarterback. And to me, that's just – it parallels what we saw with Jake. I hope it has the same finish. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so, health-wise, how's Alabama – we heard Nick Saban say that uh, Chase McClellan has actually been practicing – uh, Kool Aid had the concussion, but I, I know he's practicing. Is there any health concerns going into this game for the Crimson Tide? I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. I think they're in good shape. I think they're ready to go. Um, it's the plus that you get from the 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 amount of time that's off game wise, and you do get a chance to, you know, coach talks about it all the time. Uh, the rest you get. Into the season 
from two days off rather than one is is huge so when you're able to get basically five days off or whatever it was they took it it's huge Mm -hmm. it's absolutely huge now the it's the same advantage for michigan um the other part is the fact that um it, it is on both sides do you get rusty you know and that can be that can be an issue early on so staying sharp uh, being razor sharp in your next game maybe is not as easy to to come by front out of the gate, but I just think it's going to be huge for this team, and I I think they're as healthy as they could possibly be at this stage of the year. Uh, last question, Chris: uh, Are you doing anything to help disguise Alabama's signs going into this game? Uh, I am. Uh, everything will be done with me wearing camouflage. Uh, and a hunter's orange cap. I have been training for this. Uh, and when I say I've been watching film, it's, it's not of Michigan games or Alabama games. I've been watching a lot of Bugs Bunny cartoons to emulate Elmer Fudd. So there's been a ton of, a, a ton of the camo and, and hunter's orange and I'm in good shape. Awesome. Tell people yeah. how they can get a hold of your uh, let's get out of here t-shirts. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what size Jake wears, but we, we need them for our elephant in the room podcast on Roll Tide Pods, which, by the way, you're a partner on that. You, you're we, you guys have a great we show, are. too. You and Kelly. Kelly. Look, Kelly is the one that does all the work. I just sit there and and uh, try to answer whatever she throws at me. Kelly's great teammate really enjoy working with her on that and glad you guys are a part it's fun to kind of be teammates in that regard and in the next round guys have all given us an opportunity and appreciative of that and um yeah the t-shirts are crimson tide sports marketing developed it with uh people at j and j apparel who do a great job and their website is where you can find it and all their other shirts that are out there now but uh it's the letter j the letter n the letter j in the word apparel. So J and J apparel.com and you'll find the, the let's get out of here t-shirt and uh, hope they like it. Hope we get to uh, push some more sales in the next couple of weeks. And then we can do the same thing for basketball, but get uh, maybe a championship edition of the shirt coming out. We'll see. I'd love that. I'd love that. Well, Chris, I want you to give me your catchphrase, but first let me say this, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the original Bama Football Tailgate Show. Alabama and Michigan are coming up. More of the show after this. Let's get out of here. Flight by Yingling. It's the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is 12 ounces of uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment, six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, available wherever beer is sold. DG Yingling and Sun Incorporated, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please enjoy responsibly. Hi, Barry Buckner for Tuscaloosa Hyundai. Based on the past two years, you've heard nothing but bad news with interest rates. But when you can buy new Hyundai Santa Fe's with 0% financing for five years, that's great news. And it's here right now. New Santa Fe's now at Tuscaloosa Hyundai with 0% 60-month financing. Zero for 60 months. Plus, you make no payments until February of 2024. If you've been thinking about buying, don't wait. New Tuscaloosa Hyundai Santa Fe's with 0 60-month financing. Financing plus no payments until February 2024 is great news. So let's get straight to the point. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. Tuscaloosa Hyundai, corner of Skyland and Hargrove, TuscaloosaHyundai.com. Get America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and owner assurance during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Shop online, TuscaloosaHyundai.com. With approved credit, see dealer for complete details. Hey, this is Reagan, owner of R&R Cigars, the Cigar Mansion in downtown Tuscaloosa. Located at 27036th Street across from the Home Two Suites. 
Come down to r and and see why we're the ultimate cigar and bourbon experience. With over 165 bourbons and five private barrels, our selection of bourbon is unmatched. We have the best cocktails around and our cigar selection is legendary. Our lounge and service are world class. Come and experience the luxury of the mansion and see why it's a world-renowned cigar and spirits destination. Check out Pawn Royale at 1019 McFarland Boulevard in Northport. The summer season is almost over. Time to go to Pawn Royale and find some amazing deals. Right now, our lawn and gardening inventory must go. That includes mowers, trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, you name it. Pawn Royale has deals on everything. Many items at cost or less. If you're in the market, come make a deal. That's Pawn Royale, 1019 McFarland Boulevard in Northport. Barry Buckner for Genesis of Tuscaloosa. You heard it said, affordable luxury. But when it comes to affordable service, every new Genesis we sell comes with three-year, 36,000-mile complimentary service. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. GenesisofTuscaloosa.com Ownership limitations may apply. See your retailer for details. Genesis reserves the right to change program without notice. Exclusions may apply. Unique on the Strip. It's the best place to watch sports. You're not even kidding. 11 TVs, NFL and MLB package, NHL, EPL, and so much more. If you want a game, they have it. Now they're doing weekly NFL Pick'em, winners every Sunday, and grand prizes on Super Bowl Sunday. And we haven't even mentioned the drink specials. Of course they have daily drink specials. You can see them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Unique T-Town every day. Unique on the Strip. The best place to watch sports in Tuscaloosa. This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort. Back on the original Bama football tailgate show and uh, always presented by Tuscaloosa Hyundai. Uh, this is a great time to get a new Hyundai over at Tuscaloosa Hyundai. Say hi to our friend Barry Buckner, the Elantra, the Sinatra, an SUV like the, the Tucson, the Kona, the Santa Fe. Right now, Tucson and Santa Fe's with the right credit, you can get them interest free. So think about that with finance rates as high as they are. Go find out for yourself. Plus, no side stickers. And uh, a lot of those cars are made right here in the state of Alabama. We're previewing the Crimson Tide and the Michigan Wolverines. The Rose Bowl kicks off today at three o'clock. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're hanging out with us on our YouTube channel, the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. And don't forget, after the game, we'll have the post game show there as well as soon as the game is over. All right, let's start. We got Chris Coleman and uh, Brett Elmore. I'm Mick Gillespie. Uh, Coleman from the Comerica podcast and, of course, Unique on the Strip. Coleman, how enormous is this game for both programs? I mean, it's paramount. It cannot be bigger. Uh, Alabama, though, uh, been here, seen it. No, you When you sign up to come to Alabama, whether it be as a player – a coach, a fan, a student, you know, whatever. When you saw it, these are the games you come here for. You expect to play in these games. And with Michigan, they've been in these games the past couple of years. They haven't been on the, the good side of it. But uh, they, they, they're they a Blue Bloods uh, program. And so anytime you play one of these games, it's, it's paramount for everything because winning recruits better than anything. And so you win this game. Now you've got that all that media attention, all that hype going into the national title game, where once again recruits are going to see it nonstop. And winning begets winning. And so, yeah, it's absolutely paramount. Brett, same question. Yeah, a couple of blue blood programs, helmet game. We talked about that on other shows. Rose Bowl, granddaddy of them all, biggest stage in college football. Uh, I think it's bigger for uh, Michigan. I think uh, they have a huge weight on their shoulders to win. 
They haven't had a whole lot of success in the college football playoff. They haven't won a national championship since 1997. Alabama has been there. They've done that, and they've done it a lot. They've won a lot. They know how to handle success. Michigan, on the other hand, does not. They have the target on their back where normally Alabama does. They're the number one team in the country, and they've got the target on their back. It's an immense pressure cooker for Jim Harbaugh with all the outside noise and then preparing to play in a playoff game. Number one, a playoff game that you need to win because you haven't done that. But then number two, you, you need to win a national championship. Their fan base is hungry for it. And if they don't win it this year, oh, boy, uh, they're not going to be good in Ann Arbor. Yeah, no doubt. Coleman, biggest uh, confidence and most concern today when you look at this matchup for Alabama? Um, I'm, I'm extremely arrogant as an Alabama fan. But, Mick, you know that. Uh I, I've said this on here a few times. You got to remember the Sunday morning after we lost to Texas, that's when I got Bama at plus 2,800 to win the national title, you know, because I knew that was the best odds and my, my faith and belief in Alabama. Uh, the only thing that I worry about at all is turnovers. That's it. Uh, they can't beat us. We can only beat ourselves. Uh, what I'm looking forward to is uh, the celebration after this game and relaxing, watching Washington, Texas, and seeing who we get. All right. Well, you stay where you're at, Coleman. We're going to pick it when we come back. Uh, first, though, Brett Elmore, biggest concern today, and what are you most confident about with Alabama and Michigan? Confident in our defense. I think we're well uh, – I'm confident on both sides of the ball. I think we're well rested. I think we're focused uh, – uh, we use that laser beam mentality. I think we're focused in, and I agree with Coleman. Uh, what I'm worried about is us just turning it over, beating ourselves. Uh, zany plays, you know, the uh, the grave digger play didn't come, you know, just by chance. It's because we made mistakes. I mean, uh, you know, we we can't we can't find ourselves in that position again against the number one team in the country. And uh, if we play our game and play well, we're going to win. I think it's well put, guys. When we come back, we're going to pick this game. We're going to decide uh, who's going to win and by what margin. Uh, again, though, thanks for hanging out with us here on the Bama Football Tailgate Show. And don't forget, after the game, on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel, we're going to be live and we're going to break this thing down. We'll talk Alabama and Michigan and much more. So uh, uh, that is on the YouTube channel as soon as the game's over. When we come back, though, we're going to pick Alabama and Michigan more of the original Bama football tailgate show next. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, has been making beer in America for six generations. And for nearly 200 years, we've been all about bringing the good times by hand, by foot, by bike by bikers, by fanny pack or jet pack, by whatever means necessary. With Yingling traditional lager, good times taste even better. Yingling, bring the goods. Autumn brings vivid colors to the back roads and hollows of Sevierville, Tennessee. Wind your way to quaint country churches, a historic covered bridge, and even a pick your own apple orchard. This fall, the best views are yours on Sevierville's Rocky Flats Fall Driving Tour. Learn more and find additional fall drives to enjoy at visitsevierville.com forward slash fall. Immerse yourself in the continuing dynasty of Alabama football with The Legacy Continues, a visually striking image from artist Daniel A. Moore. This sequel to Moore's 1992 sold-out painting, The Crimson Legacy, features iconic moments and memorabilia from the last 30 seasons of Tide football. Don't miss your opportunity to own this lasting tribute sure to be cherished by Bama fans for years to come. Pre-order The Legacy Continues now at DanielMoreArt.com. 
Hey y'all, it's Jennifer from the Floribama, and we're excited that football is back. The Floribama is proud to support Alabama football, and we invite you to join us at Floribama Oliver Grill for a game day experience like no other. We have over 40 TVs and a brand new game day menu that includes endless wings, Santa Fe egg rolls, street corn nachos, and so much more. Bring your friends and join us for all the college and NFL games. Floribama's Old River Grill, open at 11 a.m. daily, right across the street from the world-famous Floribama. Barry Buckner for Genesis of Tuscaloosa. You heard it said, affordable luxury. But when it comes to affordable service, every new Genesis we sell comes with three-year, 36,000-mile complimentary service. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to save, that's our business. Genesis of Tuscaloosa.com. Ownership limitations may apply. See your retailer for details. Genesis reserves the right to change program without notice. Exclusions may apply. Do you consider yourself a black sheep, misfit, or screwball? If so, we've got the perfect drink for you. Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Screwball combines two of America's favorite, peanut butter and whiskey. Enjoy it neat, on the rocks, or in your favorite cocktail. Screwball, the original most awarded peanut butter whiskey, is now available near you. Go to screwballwhiskey.com for more information. Enjoy responsibly. Advertisement by Screwball Spirits, LLC, San Diego, California. Whiskey with natural flavors, 35 35- Tuscaloosa is Alabama's ultimate sports destination and a place for outdoor enthusiasts to thrive. It's a community rooted in history and one that's on the cusp of a burgeoning art scene too. Tuscaloosa is vibrant, it's charming, and it's familiar. Its people welcome you with open arms and warm hellos into a community that's tied together. Tuscaloosa is our home This is My Great Escape. Where there's real gaming excitement. And I can be who I want to be. In a sea of slots. Taking in the big pot. And always doubling down. Our friends ask, what do y'all do at Pearl River Resort? No work. All play. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just keeping it real, baby. Real players. Real winning. Real fun at Pearl River Resort. Final segment of the original Bama football tailgate show previewing the Rose Bowl between Alabama and Michigan. Nick Saban against Jim Harbaugh, the Crimson Tide and their legacy in the SEC as champs against the Big Ten champs. Michigan and the number one team in the country, Alabama, a slight underdog in this contest. All right, quickly, guys, start with you, Brett. Give me your score today and tell me why you think Alabama or Michigan is going to win. I'm going to go with uh, Alabama. Uh, I'm going to go with Alabama, and I think uh, they will score a late touchdown and win 27-17. Okay, and why is that? Uh, just, I just feel good about the game. I mean, I, I feel good about the game. I feel good about uh, our game plan. I think we'll shut down uh, Michigan's uh, run, and um, I, I, that's just been on my mind. At 27-17, uh, score a late touchdown to, to seal it, and and – that's just been on my mind for a couple of days, so I'm going to go with it. We'll see. All right, Coleman, uh, from the Comerica podcast, tell me what you think, my friend. Um, I think that similar to what you saw in the SEC championship, don't be surprised. Don't jump off the building if Michigan scores early in this game. I think halftime is going to be right around 14 to 10 Bama, but similar to what you saw against – Ole Miss against Tennessee against a lot of games this season. The Bama D makes adjustments. Saban makes adjustments so well. Uh, I expect us to pull away in the in the second half. And I'm I'm seeing a 42 to uh, 10, maybe 13 win for the Tide. It gets ugly for Michigan as they have to pass, falling behind. Then they're going to throw at least at least one interception that is either a pick six or leads to a uh, or leads to an immediate score. Nice, Coleman. Tell everyone about Unique on the Strip in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Unique's a, a lovely dive bar. Uh, we have eleven TVs here. Actually, about to add a couple more in. Um, Every game you want to see from the EPL this morning, you can come watch United Donkey Games up with me. 
or you can uh to the nhl to obviously we have the nfl package every sunday every game on as that winds down to the playoffs mlb is just around the corner when the meeting is going on every sport always on we do live acoustic acts thursday friday saturday nights um drink specials every day open by 2 p.m monday through friday uh here till 2 a.m on Saturday and Sunday, we open even earlier. We open normally, I say by 11 a.m. because there's a lot of Saturdays I'm open around 9 a.m. Nice, nice. Well, thank you, guys. And I'm going to tell you, Alabama is going to win this football game because they're going to play the best defense they've played this season. They'll make Michigan, who's already one-dimensional, uh, one-dimensional. They'll, they'll be able to run the football. Their defense will give Alabama some trouble because they've got a good defensive line. And J.J. McCarthy's a smart quarterback. But this is what Alabama's been built on, winning these games. Nick Saban is almost unbeatable when he has a month to prepare. And I think that Alabama's uh, youth and talent is going to to be the, uh, the is going to beat Michigan's uh, experience in this football game, and I've got Alabama with a uh, a twenty eight to ten win. I want to remind you guys too that the Bama football tailgate show is brought to you by Yingling Logger. Yingling is the sixth generation company, and Cheryl Yingling, who is part of the company's ownership, is a proud Alabama grad. We know her; she went to school with us. She puts a little bit of crimson love in each one of those uh, green bottles. But also try Yingling flight great time of year for the uh yingling um tan black and tan the porter's great you can go by unique on the strip and you can always get yingling flight there and yingling lager so uh tell coleman that you said hi when you swing by there also shows always brought to you by the floor bama i was there today for the polar plunge and uh, that, that was quite a scene, let me tell you, to get my uh, New Year's Day started. So happy New Year 2024, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Tailgate Show. We'll talk to you after the game on YouTube, on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel, and for our entire crew, uh, Roll Tide.